Welcome to my second part look at the uh, comic book industry related materials. Um, this time I wanted to talk about the latest game for uh, the Arkham series, uh, the uh, Batman Arkham Knight, the, the third and last um, uh, Arkham related game created by um, WB uh, W Games because I think Origins was Montreal or uh, it was with a different studio, whatever. But it, it's the last of the of the series, and uh, with it, it's, it's been delayed and various things like that. But we've gotten a host of information about it uh, this past uh, few weeks that uh, it's been very interesting. Um, first up, my overall kind of impressions. To be honest, I'm a little worried about the game. Um, I know the combat and the stuff like that will be fine. My problem is probably, and to be honest, it has to deal a lot with things like the Batmobile being in there. Um, that uh, in order for the Batmobile to work, um, to really work. First off, you need a world immensely bigger than even what we had in Origins in order for that to work. Because um, that was just too big of a sandbox, I think, for a moving vehicle. Um, it's, it, it needs to be a little bit, little bit bigger, not just in the scope, but in scale. Um, like, to be honest, I never really saw those roads as being big enough for two-way traffic, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm a little bit worried that um, the Batmobile stuff is just going to be... Like, I don't want a GTA Batman game type of a thing, or, or it, when it comes to that driving experience or anything else like that. I think that, that kind of takes away uh, takes away a lot of um, of the game when, when things go down that route. And I hope that um, even if it is in there, and I know there's going to be action sequences with it, which bug me, but um, I hope that it's kind of like a one-off thing. Like, it's not going to be a, um, a, uh, a continually focused aspect of the game. Uh, maybe make it like a loading screen thing or whatever would work um but just not don't make it critical is, is the only thing i'm really fearing of with it because again um driving is really difficult in games um and making that fun um i, I guess i know the whole need to speed and you got a ton of games out there that um kind of go down the route but to be honest uh, those games get old um, pretty fast um, just because you're doing the same thing over and over and over again um, which is never fun in a game but in the same route uh, you generally have poor controls or things go really haywire like in something like um, LA Noir or something in which um, the the driving is more of a distraction than than, than um, it kind of takes away again from the game so I'm kind of a little bit concerned with that um, but ultimately the rest I have no real big problems with. I hope the Joker's not in it at all. Um, if nothing else, maybe a cutscene, like a past back, backflash or something, but uh, I hope he's not in it at all just because we need, we need um, to get away from, uh, we need to get away from having um, the same villains always pop up in this medium. Uh, the Joker, Magneto, um, uh, Loki, if you he's getting kind of old, though I know it's mainly because of the popularity of, of the of the actor. But um, you know, it's just we need we need or the Green Goblin, good gravy. We just need to have a, a fresh outlook of, of. There's tons of villains that all these that all these people can fight. Um, we need to have. We need to get some variety in there, and that's why I know um, Scarecrow is supposed to be the big, big name, big name thing. But again, I just I hope the Joker's not in it at all because if he is in it, then it's going to be something like Origins, where um, he's going to he's going to take the spotlight no matter who you try to make the focus of the game off of. So again, he he's dead. Mark Hamill did a great job, great, great 
um, conclusion to his character, leave him dead um, and be done with it, you know, type of a thing. And don't do no clay face thing or whatnot. You did that before. Um, just, just leave the character dead entirely. Um, except for maybe, again, the only exception to all of this, maybe, would be if, um, I don't know, if Batman gets injected enough with fear toxin or something, um, and he begins to hallucinate and see the Joker, you know, something like that would be fine. It just he, he just better not be part of the story because that's the other, we just need something different in terms of villains. The next big thing that's been getting a whole lot of attention in news um, pretty much is the uh, the DLC and the various um, other playable characters um, that are going to be um, included. Uh, now we know, uh, we know, I think out of the box, um, we're pretty much guaranteed um, Tim Drake, which looks really old and with a crew cut, and which just looks kind of weirdly, really weird. Um, Nightwing, I believe, and um, Catwoman. I believe, or maybe not Catwoman, I forget. Um, but I, I believe those are the three um, that are going to be like um, part of the main storyline or whatnot. Um, or I, I could be confusing, but I, th at least those three are going to be part of the main storyline, which I hope it's a little bit more than what they did in, uh, in, in City. Because honestly, I thought the Catwoman stuff was pointless. Um, and just, I, there's no, it was no real thought or purpose really to put that in there. Um, and the Robin stuff was okay, but, um, that was DLC. Um, but anyways, so I hope they do a little bit better for that. As far as the DLC stuff goes, um, we've got a whole bunch of different skins, um, for the Batmobile, for the characters. Um, we've got Batgirl, which it was supposed to be in there. Um, and I believe that's kind of all that we know for, uh, and, and ch more challenge maps, of course, or whatnot. Um, and it's, it's a season pass, and I think the big spiel about of it now is that it's 40 bucks. Uh, and to be honest, um, I never really understood such, all this big drive when it comes to DLC in the first place, especially when it's skins. Um, I know the whole argument that you're supporting the developers and and whatnot, but really that's that's a slippery slope, especially if it's expensive. If it's like two, one or two bucks to change your skin, then sure, whatever. Uh, you know, it's good to, I guess, change the skin for a second playthrough or whatnot, but when you're charging five, ten bucks for a pack of skins, I think that's going a little overboard. Um, just because really and truthfully, again, I, I I don't. I just don't understand the the, the appeal of it. Um, so what if you can play the '60s Batman playing through the game? Big whoop to do. Um, you know, if now if you got something uh, special with the skin, like um, different weapons, or um, or you, if you um, had different advantages or disadvantages, or you know whatnot, if, depending on the uh, skin that you that you choose, then sure, go for it. But if it's uh, just a simple palette swap. Um, I think that's a bit of a waste of money, and I think that's kind of a bad sign to give the developers and such um, that that is something that we're willing to pay money and accept for. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit hindered as far as that goes. The other big thing is with the character DLCs and so forth, um, there needs to be more effort put into this. Um, and this is... Again, I don't know what if there's going to be more in this season pass or or whatnot. Uh, challenge maps are shouldn't be really challenge maps are my in my opinion are more like just a, a brief step up from skin you know uh, different skins uh, just to see how long you could survive type of a thing. You know this is stuff that should be included in the game at launch, um, not necessarily DLC. But um, when it comes to DLC and the story mode stuff. Um, Think about it. If, if the DLC is like ten bucks or fifteen bucks or whatnot, um, that's a sixth of the cost of the game. If the game is sixty bucks, fifty, sixty bucks, or whatever you want to call it, um, then I would expect a sixth as far as the, at least the length of the game as far as t content goes. Uh, think about it. The Catwoman, which granted I know the Catwoman came with the game um, initially, uh, but you do have to purchase it, I guess, still or whatever. That was basically you taking on 
Ivy was just thugs, big whoop de doo, and then you take on Two Face, which um, was just a carbon copy of um, Deadshot in in the in the deal, and then you had um, Robin's DLC, which uh, you know you had um, Mooks, your typical reskin of Mooks that you fought before throughout the game. Granted, you had a little bit of strategy, I guess, with it because you had a little bit of a different weapon selection. Um, than you did with Batman, like you had the shield and the staff and various things like that. Um, but then you had Harvey, which was a carbon copy again of, um, if you want to call it, of either Two Face or the uh, again the the Deadshot stuff. So um, when when it comes to the DLC content, um, you have to imagine that the developers and all that. If you're gonna, I'm not asking for re- re- redoing skins or whatnot, but you have the skins, you have the city, you have um, you know, you, you, you have the, the, the mechanics all the way done. Um, obviously if you're selling, um, skin packs, you have that process done as far as just changing the look of the different characters. Um, so if you're going to create a character that acts and looks the same, then why not make it a little bit more worthwhile? You know, make it, make it, um, multi-objective or make it, make it so that's, they're part of the sandbox and they have to, um, you know, do some deduction work too or figuring stuff out or their own i hate to say it their own riddler ch- riddler challenge like they did with the catwoman stuff or um you know multiple um main baddie fights or you know there, there's so much more that you could do to add more content um if if a game is 30 hours long then i expect at least two or three hours when it comes to a DC- dlc content if i'm spending 10 15 bucks for it and with them reusing the stuff, then it's really not going to take that long for them to program. Uh, granted, I'm not a programmer, but I know enough of the process to know that um, it's, yeah, it would take a little bit of work to create a new scenario and dialogue and potentially voice acting and, and various things like that, sure. Um, but um, from a programming standpoint, uh, it's you, you already have all the assets created and, and everything, so it's just a matter of putting the puzzle together. So really and truthfully, I think um, I'm, I'm fine with the DLC as long as that there's enough content. And if there's, um, and again, with the season pass, and again, I, I hate the idea of season pass because if a game flops or if the developer studio has problems or, you know, or what if what if their A team gets pulled away on another project and now their B team has to do the, the, the next patch update or whatever. So... A season pass is very dangerous in my mind for most games, anyways. But, um, but if I'm going to spend forty bucks on DLC content, which is, you know, pretty darn close to the full cost of the game, then I expect almost double the worth of content that I got in that initial game. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily always have to be voice acted, or you know, it, it's just we need to we need to expect what we what. We need to just expect the same amount of content value um, when we when we purchase for something because it it gets it's a dangerous slippery road when we're willing to pay so much for less um, is basically what I'm getting at. So that's kind of my thoughts on the game. Um, I, I of course I'll definitely hold off judgment until some more information or until we get closer to the release date at least. But um, I'm. I'm a little hesitant on it. Uh, again, I think the combat and stuff like that is, is going to be fine. It's just that the, the story and um, various aspects like like the the Batmobile and various things it just it's got me really worried about the game. And I really um, I really want it to do well. Um, that I wanted to do well enough to justify a purchase of a PS4 um, and, and various things like that. So that's kind of where I'm at with um, the Gotham Knight. Um, let me know kind of uh, where you guys stand on the on the game. Do you think it's yeah? Are you think um, from what we know and what we've been told, um, is is this is it looking like this is going to be better than City, um, or is it going to um, you know be a middle ground, maybe something closer to Asylum type quality or excitement, or um, hopefully it's better than Origins. But uh, just it, what what is your excitement level for the game, and are you still um, are you as, as pumped for it as you were for City or Origins, should I say? Um, so kind of let me know in the comments below. Uh, and so, 
again thanks for watching and i will talk to you next time